morning. I'd like to welcome you all to the 3C2A 19th Annual Convention. My name is Carlisle Carter. I am the CEO and President of the 3C2A. It is my personal pleasure and honor to welcome each and every one of you to the 3C2A Scholar Athlete Luncheon. This convention represents an opportunity for us to honor outstanding individuals and for fellowship with friends and colleagues, new and old. We know that some of you have very busy schedules. We want to thank each of you for taking time away to attend this year's convention and for your exemplary leadership and service on behalf of nearly 27,000 student athletes statewide. As you know, planning a convention is a shared experience, and we are thankful to have the support of all of our affiliate organizations. I encourage you to seek them out and discuss with them those things that you like and dislike about this year's convention. The 3C2A is also grateful for the continued support of Bob McCloskey Insurance, is the exclusive intercollegiate athletic insurance of the 3C2A. It's my pleasure to acknowledge them at this time. They are contributing funds to assist us in providing today's luncheon. And we should, in their absence, at least thank them. <laughs> Additional sponsors for today's luncheon include Rawlings, the official baseball of 3C2A baseball championship, Diamond Sports, sponsor of Tuesday evening's social event, and the official softball of the 3C2A softball championship, and Jostens, the official awards vendor of the 3C2A. We also have Rags International, provider of the 3C4A certificate awards. Now, let's enjoy your meal, help out your servers by placing your meal selection in front of your plate, and we'll return shortly to begin the award ceremony. Thank you. Here to the podium. All right. Thank you, Carlisle. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? No. Is that better? Okay. All right, let's start with good afternoon. Very nicely done. <laughs> All right, so it is my pleasure and it's an honor today to present the awards to our student athletes. And so the celebration banquet today, we're going to do the 3C2A scholar teams, as well as this year's 3C2A honor roll students. And after that, I'll continue with the 2015 male and female scholar athletes of the year. So that's three awards. And then we're going to transition later in the program to the recipients of the 3C4A Achievement Awards. And those will be presented by the Academic Advisors Association. So we have a lot of awards to give out this afternoon. So I am up here representing the awards committee. And I am delighted to be able to do so and present these three awards. But before I go any further, I want to issue a personal note of appreciation on behalf of all the members of the awards committee who have taken time from their busy schedules to help make the final selections today. So can I ask if you're, if you're an awards committee member, please raise your hand and let's give you a round of applause. Thank you. And we also know these scholar athletes uh, didn't do this alone. None of us did. So I'd like to give a round of applause. If you're a family member who's here with an award winner, please raise your hand and I'd like to acknowledge the family members. <laughs> and none of this wouldn't, would happen without the coaches. If you're a coach here today, raise your hand and let's acknowledge you. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to start with the 3C2A scholar teams, and each of them has received a certificate from the 3C2A office. And so I'm going to highlight them now. We'll do fall and then spring. 
So starting with the 2014 fall scholar athlete teams, and you'll see them on the slides on either side of the room. Modesto Junior College men's basketball coached by Paul Brogan. Their GPA was 3.62. Give them a round of applause. Next, Ventura College women's basketball, coached by Ned Mercedic, GPA 3.3. Fresno City College men's cross country, coached by Gary Bluth with a 3.38 GPA. Next is women's cross country from American River College. They earned a cumulative GPA of 3.29 and are led by coach Jeanette allred Pallas. All right. Next up, Sacramento City College women's golf team with a GPA of 3.16, coached by Michael Thomas. I'm not supposed to have favorites, but this next one's my favorite. Balsam Lake College women's soccer team, coached by Dottie Roboto. Their GPA was 3.16. And Dottie, are you here? I did not see him come in. No. Okay. All right. So next up, Fresno City College women's volleyball team, coached by Tracy uh, Anger Schulte, with a GPA of 3.34. 3.35, oh, says four on here, okay. <laughs> Carlisle's giving me a signal over there. All right, uh, Diablo Valley College men's water polo team, coached by John Romer, with a GPA of 3.01. Nice. All right, two more in this category. The Diablo Valley College women's water polo team, this gives them two wins, they were coached by Rich Rick Millington with a GPA of 3.14. And then finally in this category for wrestling, we have Cuesta College, coached by Joe Dansby with a GPA of 3.08. Right. So that completes the fall 2014 winners. Now moving to the spring 2015 winners, starting with Pasadena City College's badminton team, bad, what did I say? Badminton team coached by Jennifer Ho with a GPA of 3.24. Next up, the baseball team from Feather River College earned a team cumulative GPA of 3.31. Their coach is Terry Baumgartner. This makes two wins in a row for them. The inaugural winner for beach volleyball is Irv Irvine Valley College, coached by Tom Pestalacy with a GPA of 3.47. <laughs> Next up, Santa Barbara City College men's golf team with a GPA of 3.33. They were coached by Chuck Melend Melendez, forgive me for that. Okay, for softball, we have College of the Canyons with a 3.24 GPA, coached by John Wismath. Okay. The men's swim and dive team at Long Beach City College are a repeat from last year. They were coached by Chris Oding with a GPA of 3.39. Right, Grossmont College's swim and, women's swim and dive team is a winner with a GPA of 3.22. Head coach is Larry Larson. Okay, Ventura College, coached by Nelson Emery, is the men's tennis winner with a GPA of 3.33.
All right, where were we? Um, sequoias. All right, we will continue. For women's tennis, we have the College of the Sequoias. This is also their second win in a row. They won with a team GPA of 3.59. The team was coached by Jay Johnson. Yeah. Okay, another award for Cuesta College. Their men's track and field team had a GPA of 3.06, coached by Brian Locker. Okay. Okay, we have two more in this category for women's track and field, El Camino College. <laughs> yes, some representatives here today. They were coached by Dean Lofgren and their GPA was 3.11. Okay. Yep, thank you. And our final uh, winner in this category, we have Moore Park College's men's volleyball team. Their GPA was 3.29, coached by Aaron Headland. A round of applause. Okay, so to the deans, athletic directors, and coaches, you are to be commended for all of your hard work for getting the nominations in for consideration by the awards committee. The committee received a total of 67 nominations, so this group was very busy. So, and also this year, not only is a banner year, we're so proud of all the work on behalf of all of the colleges and all of the scout scholar athletes. So let's give one last round of applause for the incredible team achievements. Congratulations, everybody. Okay. All right. On to the second category of awards, which is the honor roll inductees for 2015. Okay. Speaking from personal experience, it is not easy to select these winners as we had so many outstanding students. The good thing is, though, they're all winners. I think all of our students are, actually. And if for no other reason that the students have accomplished a goal that they set for themselves. Many of them are here today, but if not, they may be represented by a family member or an athletic director or a designee. Okay. So each one of these students is going to receive a commemorative plaque. Uh, Carlisle, they're on the table over there. And we're going to ask each of the honor roll students or their representatives to come forward when their name is called and accept the award from Executive Director Carlisle Carter. Okay. So I will be calling up. There's two uh, individuals on each slide, and we're going to ask you all to come up in pairs. Okay. So beginning with Sarah Brandt. She's a cross-country track and field student athlete from Butte College with a GPA of 3.78. The second student is Molly Casey, a swim water polo student athlete from Cuesta College with a 3.85. Okay. Okay, congratulations. All right. So the next two athletes are Ashley Diaz, a swim water polo student athlete from Long Beach City College, GPA of 3.55, and Marissa Doran, a volleyball beach volleyball student athlete from Irvine Valley College with a 3.87 GPA. Next pair, Alexandria Dumaplin, a swim dive student athlete from American River College with a 3.82 GPA, and Blake Edmondson, a baseball student athlete from the College of the Sequoias with a 3.92 GPA.
Okay. All right. The next pair are Abby Gregory, a tennis student athlete from College of the Sequoias with a 3.86 GPA, and Brogan Griffin, women's basketball student athlete from Maricosta College with a perfect 4.0. more groups. Next group is Serena Leduff, volleyball student athlete from the College of the Canyons with a GPA of 3.76 and Isaiah Manley, football student athlete from Mount San Antonio College with another perfect GPA, 4.0. Impressive. Yeah. Okay, our next pair is Chris Sands, a swim dive student athlete from Ventura College with another perfect GPA. These guys are high achievers. Student athletes, perfect GPA, it's impressive. And John Sinclair, student athlete for the wrestling team at Cuesta College who had an outstanding GPA of 3.75. I do think we could probably learn some time management skills from some of these students. <laughs> All right, our last pair is Trent Spitzen, men's track and field for Saddleback College with another perfect 4.0 GPA. And completing this year's honor roll is Justin Spinner, baseball student athlete from Lassen College with a GPA of 3.92. Thank you. So as we're taking the pictures, how about one more big round of applause for all the 2015 <laughs> honor roll student athletes. So all of these candidates, very impressive academically, athletically, and in terms of their citizenship, proving again that a person can really make a difference in the lives of those around them. So congratulations to all the 2015 honor roll winners. And there goes the mic. Thank you. Okay. If you can't hear me, just holler. So we're on to the third category. This is this year's Scholar Athlete Recipients. It's a great pleasure to tell you that the winners were selected by a diverse panel of judges who serve on the 3C2A uh, Board of Directors Awards Committee. We acknowledged them earlier in this presentation. So the Scholar Athlete Award is the highest student athlete achievement honor announced by the 3C2A. Each year, Colleges and conferences submit nomination materials for the awards, which focus on four areas of scholarship, citizenship, athletics, and recommendations from their college. So to be nominated, each candidate must achieve a cumulative GPA grade point average, a grade point average of 3.5 or higher, 
and have completed 36 semesters or 48 quarter units of post-secondary credit. They must have demonstrated outstanding citizenship in athletic leadership, such as the holding of a student body office or per by participating in college and community activities. And finally, each candidate must have participated in two seasons of sport at a California community college. So we have one male and one female awardee today. The first recipient is the Male Scholar Athlete of the Year, Anthony Berkovats. And I have the honor of reading a, a short bio on him before he or his representative is invited up front to receive his reward. So born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, Anthony credits his personal and academic talents to the many opportunities available to him throughout his diverse community. Having an extremely close family paired with a diverse group of students opened Anthony's eyes and here, multiple cultures and religions ultimately shaping his perspective on life. Attending Mills High School, a top high school in a highly competitive Bay Area school district, constantly challenged him both intellectually and personally. Not only did he continuously reach his maximum potential, but he also learned to never settle for the bare minimum, always setting new goals for himself along the way. With this mindset already in play, he entered Sacramento City College which allowed him the opportunity to hone, hone these skills as well as increase his interpersonal communication strategies which upon entering a, a community which was foreign to him at Sac City College. Being a full-time student athlete not only taught Anthony the importance of teamwork but also the power of responsibility, time management, and commitment both on and off the field. Skills that have been transferred into his professional career so he has entered law enforcement, and he's realized that each skill he practices every day on the job have derived from his years at Sacramento City College. So although being a full-time student athlete has its stresses, including multiple shoulder injuries, Anthony is eternally grateful for his time with Sac City and would like to deeply thank his coaching staff throughout his two years with Panthers football team, especially Coach Walker and Coach Kell. Let's give him a round of applause. And unfortunately, uh, Anthony could not be with us today because he's doing what we hope all our students do. He's gone into the workforce based on his training that he received, right, at California Community College. So he could not be here, but his family is here. You saw them come up and take pictures. And so what 3C2A did is they do have a video so that you can hear directly from Anthony. Good afternoon. I would first like to thank you all for taking the time out of your schedules to be here with us today in celebration of my and my fellow athletes' accomplishments. Unfortunately, my recently acquired position as a Bay Area police officer has reduced the flexibility of my schedule, resulting in my absence this afternoon. I would personally like to thank the CCCAA, Mitch Campbell, our Dean of Kinesiology, Health, and Athletics, professors, family, teammates, Coach Walker, Coach Kale, and the rest of the coaching staff. I am terribly sorry I cannot be there in person to thank you all, and I sincerely hope this video accurately expresses how humbled I am by this acknowledgement. I'll have you know, my football career wasn't a walk in the park. No, I'm not talking about the 6 a.m. practices, the bleacher runs in the raging Sacramento heat, or the biology exams I'd have to prep for when I got home from those exhausting days. Those were just the little bumps in the road compared to the larger ones that came before. I graduated high school in 2010 with the dreams and determination to play college football. However, after months into practice, my position as a tight end was released from the program I was in at the time. Confused and dejected, I searched for another school that utilized a tight end. However, none of the local community colleges around my hometown had this option. My search soon led me about 100 miles north of home to the unknown campus of Sacramento City College. Excited, yet apprehensive, I moved to Sacramento in 2011 and began my journey as a Panther. A couple months into our practices, I tore my labrum, requiring surgery and rehabilitation for the rest of the season. Suffering both physically and mentally, the second obstacle launched me into a state of constant remorse. I would think to myself, 
What was next in the cards for me? Is this even worth the trouble? With doubts in my mind about the upcoming season, I approached Coach Kale and Coach Walker, who changed my perspective on playing again. Over the next two years, I perfected the formula of balancing school, athletics, and a social life. I credit this to both my family and the Sac City football program, for they consistently provided support and guidance. Growing up in a household where the importance of academics were always stressed, mixed with a little bit of my OCD, studying was never a burden. I will admit adding football into the mix proved difficult. However, I always prioritized my education first. Studying also came easy at Sacramento City due to their remarkable professors and their availability if I ever needed help outside of class. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone in attendance, and I'm deeply sorry I was unable to make it. Congratulations, Anthony. So our female recipient of the Scholar Athlete Award is just as exceptional, Kelly Wong. Give her a round of applause. Kelly Wong. So Kelly is a San Francisco native who grew up in the Sunset District and started playing basketball at the age of seven. She played basketball and softball for Lowell High School and led both teams to four consecutive AAA championships. Kelly was named to the AAA Girls Basketball All-League First Team her junior year and received the AAA All-City Player of the Year during her senior year. Her parents, Victor and Jenny, instilled in her and her siblings, Brandon and Kira, the value of hard work. Growing up, she emulated her brother's work ethic in the classroom, which translated well into her academics and athletics. She says that being a good role model for her younger sister, Kira, now motivates her. So Kelly was a two-year starter and two-time captain for the Rams basketball team at City College of San Francisco. She was also a two-time Coast North first team member and was named to the Triple C 2A NorCal All-State third team. She also helped the Rams to a state semifinal appearance and just earlier, just earlier this month. She's a computer science major who plans to transfer to a four-year university to pursue her bachelor's degree and continue her athletic career. Kelly viewed her decision to attend the City College of San Francisco as the best alternative to get into a four-year university. She said visiting the school and meeting some of the players on the basketball team and the staff convinced her to pick City College. Kelly is a part-time employee at City College's Admissions and Records Department and serves as president of City College's sports club called the Ram Zone and participates in a number of campus-wide activities. She credits her head coach, Derek Lau, his staff, and the athletics department for her success. She thanks her coaches for setting high expectations, her counselor for keeping her academically on track, and her teammates for their support. So with that, I welcome Kelly to the podium. Hi, first of all, I'd like to thank the CCCAA for this award. Uh, this award has made me more appreciative of my experience at City College and all the people that have helped me get here today. Um, coming out of high school, I didn't know if I wanted to keep playing basketball or if I was even good enough to play at the next level. But after meeting Coach D and a few of the players, they convinced me that if I worked hard, the journey would be worth it and the opportunities would be endless. And they were right, because there's been a lot of perks going to City College from like the small classroom sizes that you might not get at a four-year university to perks like being able to speak at this event and be here. Um, probably the highlight of my experience at City was going to the state banquet and playing in the Final Four. And although we came up a little short, if I could give this award back for another chance at that game, I would. <laughs> but um, I have no doubt that City will be back there soon. Um, lastly, I'd just like to thank my teammates for uh, having my back, my coaches for believing in me, and my parents for their support and encouragement. And just a quick shout out to my sister, because if I don't mention her, she'll give me a hard time about it. <laughs> but um, I hope I'm someone you can look up to and remember that hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Thank you.
All right, one last round of applause for Anthony and Kelly. It's impressive. It just all these student athletes and, and their abilities to manage so many different things in their lives and beyond athletics and school, I'm guessing many of them are working and have families. So it is just truly uh, impressive. I'm impressed by all of you. So that's the first three awards, but we're not done yet. It is now my pleasure to in invite Bruce for re I practiced your name 10 times. I needed 11, obviously. Faruya, did I get it? Faruya, as uh, to represent the 3C4A selection committee to the podium for our next inspirational awards. With that, please welcome Bruce. That's okay for my name. There's been different people up here every year. They haven't gotten it right yet. That's all right. <laughs> Welcome to the 3C4A 2016 edition of the Student Athlete Achievement Awards. I really like giving this award out because it represents the everyday student athlete. All you coaches, athletic directors, trainers, eligibility clerks, all understand what we go through on a daily basis. We try and work hard on the career, personal, and academic goals of our student athletes. Some get it, some don't get it, some come back, some don't. Today we're going to highlight two student athletes who came back and did a wonderful job. The 3C4A would also like to pub publicly thank the coaches who we know you get put in long hours of coaching, just like we put long hours of counseling in, so that's a wash. <laughs> we like to thank the NC4, uh, NCAA and the CCCAA for your academic reform. Because of it, we have 16 new members. We're up to 79 new members now. I'd like all the 3C4A counselors to stand up and be recognized. These are the counselors who are full-time, part-time, working to get their master's degrees in counseling, and we have the student-athletes' interest at, at, at your heart. The first person I'd like to introduce comes from Contra Costa College. I had a hard time spelling her name, but besides that, and I love the uh, CCCAA, but you made a mistake. At the end of Jackie's uh, bio, she had a grandmother's statement. It be strong, understand, and always be available. You forgot to put in for the people who you love and care for. So just read your stuff next time. Jackie Moody, would you please come forward? Hello, everyone. Um, I like to be. I like to say I'm honored to be here today. I'm blessed, matter of fact. Um, I want to thank God first for me being here, because it was a long ride. I didn't think I was going to make it today, but um, it's just, it's just a blessing. Uh, I want to thank my parents and um, 
my family supporters, my coach, Mr. Wade, Bruce, that's like keeping me motivated in the things I do. Um, my grandma, who's here with us today, you know, I carry her with me. Um, she would have loved this and um, she would appreciate it. Like this, uh, um, this opportunity, this special moment in my life. Um, about five years back, I never knew I would play basketball anymore. I was um, in a shooting accident, like a drive-by, but I didn't fear. I didn't fear it. I never feared the obstacles of my everyday life. Like, actually, I was worried that my dad would be mad at me that I, I got shot because I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> Like, but, and that's why, like, I pushed to be successful. Like, I know it didn't just end right there. Like, I didn't, people say your life flashed. Mine's never did. It was just like, okay, I got to, I got to keep going. Something's still out there for me to reach. And um, my grandma plays a uh, major role in, um, uh, my character development and who I am today. I'm like the glue to my family, to my friends, to like, um, give me a second. She's a big part, like, just keeping me together, like, just going forward. Um, I fell to depression, like, three years back. Bad. Because I didn't know what was, I didn't know what to do. Playing ball was everything to me in school. But my family is the first thing. The first thing that comes first. I don't care about anything but my family first. And um, when my parents first went through the divorce, it was hard. My dad like struggled, and I had we were older. We made it on our the the four oldest made it on our own, but having two younger siblings, just looking at them like, what are we gonna what are what are they gonna eat next? It was hard for me, so I gave up. I gave up a whole year of ball for them. I took on a night job and fought every day to make sure they had everything they needed. And now, like, it's a blessing to just be here. And they're all, they're they're prosperous. Like, they're happy. I see my dad happy, like, we're just stronger, you know? And um, I'm sorry for crying, because I don't know. <laughs> I just like my dad. He'll get up here and start crying, like, for no reason. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Being here means a lot to me. I'm still trying to soak in how, how important this is to me. Um, I just want to thank everybody for coming out here and supporting all the athletes, all the coaches that have just been there. You know, coaches play a major role. My coach stood by me through everything still to this day. Through the struggle with me not even playing for him for a whole year. He was still there every day. And it means a lot to have support from family and, uh, like, coaches. And I just want to thank the... Uh, C C C A A for like just even giving awards out like for student athletes and acknowledging all the hard effort that we actually put through to become successful people today. And I'm very blessed, so thank you.
Connie Thompson, could you please come up with the, for the photo shoot and present the award to the student athlete, please? That's why we do what we do. The next young lady, I give you a lot of credit for spelling the medical terms correctly in your bio. <laughs> I'm very honored and uh, happy to present Holly Riker Sloan. Hello. Um, um, so first of all, I want to uh, give my thank yous to, uh, first of all, the 3C4A, also um, Pasadena City College, which I've been lucky to call my home uh, for my academic and athletic career for the last two years, um, especially um, my AD. Tony Barbone, we call him Bones, so that's hard for me to say. Um, also, um, my athletic counselors, uh, Michael McClellan, she, uh, Casey, and Shalina Fisher. Um, also, my coaches, they're amazing. Um, my Monica Tatlinger, Stephanie Marshall, and uh, Nolan, Noli, sorry. Poor. <laughs> I don't know what's your last name. <laughs> also, uh, my softball team who has been there for me, both on and off the field, um, especially two of my teammates that are here today, uh, Derek Blow, which is mutter to me, <laughs> and um, also Karen Nahara. Yeah, she's Karen. She's K for me. Um, also, my family and my friends, my mom, Tony, and my boyfriend, Irving. Um, also, my sister who is not here today, but she is the one and only reason why I am here today in front of you. Um, so you can ask any athlete here, any athlete at any school in college, that in high school all they wanted to do was go to college and play ball. And um, I was no exception to that. And I had the family support and I had the friend support to do so. Um, until my senior year, um, I got very sick. I was diagnosed with um, acute crescentic necrotizing glenarial nephritis. I know it's a really big word, um, but long story short, pretty much that my immune system saw my kidneys as a threat and attacked them, um, both of them. And in order for it to stop, I had to go through seven rounds of chemotherapy and multiple other rounds of other drug therapies as well. Um, at this point, um, softball was not an option. Um, this is when my sister stepped in, and my sister created actually an entire support system for me. So it wasn't just my family and my friends that were a part of it. It was people from all around the world. And um, it was called Team Holly. And um, hundreds of families sent me prayers and pictures and notes and letters. and. At no point was I ever to feel alone in this process that I had to go through. Um, 
once my treatments were over, I got an opportunity to go to college again and um, play softball. And I thought that it was going to work out, and it didn't. Um, at that point, I became really, really sick, and I had to um, come back home. And that was one of the hardest things for me to do. I mean, as everyone knows, when you're young, you want to go out and you want to get away from your parents and start your own life, and that's the dream. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was the dream. And um, having to come back home um, because I, not because I had failed, but because my body didn't let me, um, was really hard. Um, but the one person who was there welcomed me home with open arms was my mom. And she did it not because she was happy I was home, because of course, I mean, gone for a couple months, you want to see your kids, you're like, oh my gosh. Um, but because she knew that I needed that. I needed somebody to tell me, you know what, it's okay. And um, I wasn't, I hadn't failed, but that this was just the next step. And so um, coming home and having to go back to the hospital and finding out that, you know what, you're not going to be able to do this. And so um, I gave up the dream of playing softball. I gave up the dream of going to college. I put it on hold for a long time. Um, about three years later, I decided, um, well, not me. <laughs> the doctors decided that it was time for me to get a kidney transplant. And um, it came down to the point where they said, OK, you know, you, you've hit your, your line. This is time to do it. And my sister stepped up. And I, I don't remember this, but she said from day one, you know, the second, the second that that transplant happens, put me first. I'm first in line to get tested. And I couldn't believe it. And not only was she almost 100% match, but she was willing to without any questions. Um, so that's what we did. I went, and the day before surgery, I was the most scared I had ever been. And um, she came up with a quilt and handed it to me. And she told me that this was a quilt that I sent a picture. It has um, a bunch of hearts on them. And um, on each heart is an individual message from people from all around the world, my Team Holly people, um, from Turkey, from New Zealand, from Europe, from all these different places, um, sending messages of love and hope and just total pos just positive vibes. And she told me that tonight, when you feel scared, to just curl up with that, quilt, to with that quilt and just know that no matter what, you are not alone. And that this positive, feel this positive energy and it will heal you. And I didn't know what she meant until I fell asleep that night and I could just feel myself be calm. And I was confident and knew that everything was going to be okay. And sure enough, um, the next day we went in and I came out of my transplant. Both of us were healthy. and. I thought I was scared before. No, at that moment, I was the most afraid of my life because at that moment, I realized I could go back to doing whatever I wanted. I became completely overwhelmed with where do I do, where do I start? And that's where PCC came to me, or I came to them. <laughs> I don't know. But either way, um, I got introduced to my coach, Monica Tatlinger, and um, I was immediately just entranced by her and her words. Um, she told me that she wanted to start a new program, that this was her first year really just being a coach at, at PCC, and she wanted to start a new program, start from fresh, and she wanted to make it great. And I immediately was on board, because I, too, was looking for that fresh start, for that new beginning. And I just knew from that point that this was going to be the place for me. And once I met McClellan and Sheehan and went to the zone and realized, I sat there and realized, wow, this is my own place where I can come and sit down and I have no excuses not to succeed. And that's what Pasadena was for me. I succeeded in academics and athletics, amazing my freshman year. And my sophomore year, I came into school and I had all the hopes and dreams of the same thing as my freshman year. Sophomore year was a lot harder, though. Um, I ended up, again, 
Uh, my body started to reject the kidney that my sister had given me two years ago, or two and a half years ago. And um, at that point, I didn't know if I was going to play softball again. And I approached my coaches, and they said, you know what, do this, and then we'll decide. And so that's when I went back to McClellan, and she and I said, listen, I need help with my academics. I need people to keep me on board, and they did. They kept me on board. They, I received for the first time in my entire academic career, I received my first 4.0 last semester. Yeah. <laughs> and, and none of that would have been possible without Pasadena and the entire group that helped me, including my mom who cooked me dinner when I was studying and my boyfriend who stayed up with me and refused to go to sleep until I finished, um, kept me focused and just kept me moving towards my dream. And I can honestly say that I never thought this would happen. And it has. And it's funny because people come up to me, and, and anyone who has experienced something you know, remotely, any of like, oh, you're lucky that this happened to you. Oh, you're lucky that you, know, you had a mom and family that supported you. And you're lucky that you had a sister that donated to you. And you're, you're lucky that you have a school that's as supportive as they are and coaches that, that believe in you and just love you and care for you and teammates that are willing to be there for you. They say you're so lucky for these things. And I smile at them and I'm just like, how? How is that luck? You know, someone told me a long time ago that luck is nothing but preparation meeting opportunity. And I sure as heck did not know prepare for this. You know, there's no preparation in this. And so for somebody to tell me that's luck, no, it's not. These people are blessings to me. There are blessings in my life. Every single person that is here today, sitting in front of you, those who couldn't make it, my sister who lives in West Virginia, she couldn't be here, but those people are blessings to me. They are not luck. They were not just put here, you know. These people were brought here and put here in my life for a purpose, and without them, I would not be here. I really wouldn't. Without every single one of you, it means so much. So. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who's here to support us. And I hope that if you see anybody who, you know, you, you, they, they're going through something hard, reach out to them and give them that positive touch. Be their blessing. Because I'm telling you, everyone could use a blessing every day. Thank you. Tony Barbone, can you uh, step over here for the picture, please? Thank you very much for your time, support, and recognition of all the student athletes and counselors. Keep on doing your job. We'll get through the six unit rule one way or another. of our scholar athlete luncheon is the opportunity to have our award winners come up and sit in front of us and we'll be able to ask a few questions. So we'd like to ask our, uh, our female scholar athlete uh, to come forward and have a seat. And also the uh, two 3C4A awardees to come and have a seat.
pass it, whatever. Okay? Oh, he said whatever. All right, uh, typically, flawed as we are, um, we'll be able to ask a few questions and hear what our student athletes have to say. I'd like to ask each one of the, the student athletes uh, to identify, if you can, one highlight of your career as a California Community College student athlete. I really enjoyed the Final Four game, but it's it's hard. That game was hard because it was so winnable, and I like looking back at it. I'm kind of disappointed, but it's a learning experience. But besides that, I think my last game playing at the City College Gym was probably one of my favorite games. Just soaking it all in. The last time I thought I might be wearing that home jersey because you don't know when you go into the state game. And having everyone come out to that game to support us was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I think mine's is uh, winning the league championship my sophomore year, this year, for with the boys team. So we both won it, um, and it hasn't been in like five, a couple years. We might have no, it might have been the first time I think. But uh, oh my, I got two actually. I have to get this one. Um, Freshman year, double. Um, all I can remember is flying in the air and double glassing this girl ball off the <laughs> backboard <laughs> so she wouldn't make the shot. It was kind of cool. <laughs> um, mine's going to have to be a freshman year Glendale tournament. Um, we went undefeated, and it was my first year at PCC. And we went nuts. We were like, stole the banner. Like we stole the, the bracket thing. You know how they like say who won. We like, we totally, okay, we didn't steal it, but we took it. We totally took it. Right. For those of you looking for the banner. <laughs> um, yeah, and we like took pictures with it. We were stoked. It was, it was, um, that was definitely my highlight. That was so much fun. I had a bunch of home runs that year, yeah, or that, like, that a tournament. It was pretty cool. Okay, those highlights were athletic in nature. Yeah. Let's, let's focus a little bit and tell me a little bit about a highlight that you have, an accomplishment that you felt really good about academically. Oh, that's easy. I got a 4.0 last semester, first time I said that in my speech. That was, like, my highlight academically. Yeah. I guess my highlight academic is when um, 2013 fall hit. I, them Fs hit. With <laughs> but uh, just getting past everything I done been through, uh, all I've ever seen in these last semesters is A's and B's um, came a long way from giving up on school. Um, I guess passing my first computer science class because I, I thought I was really lost. I didn't know what I was doing, and then I ended up getting an A, so I guess I did know what I was doing. <laughs> so that, was, that was good. And now we, we open it up to the audience uh, to ask any questions uh, of our student athletes. Um, actually, I want, I'm majoring right now in psychology and um, liberal arts, social, and behavioral science. I actually want to be a part of like the community, a big change in people. Like I love people, and just seeing like the difference you can make in someone's life is amazing. So that's what I want to be a part of. Um, mine is physical therapy. Um, right now, I'm going for my bachelor's in kinesiology with emphasis in uh, physical therapy. Right now. Did you get a chance to answer? Okay. Anyone else? Questions? Oh, come on. I know you have some. 
there's one thing that you could change or make better or you know give back to the community college experience, what would it be? So is there something that you would you wish you had that you didn't have or something that could make it better? Is there one thing that you could go back and change for the, the community college experience? For Pasadena, for my school, um, I actually think that, I don't know if other schools implement it, but we have an athletic zone, and it is literally key to athletic success at our school. And it is really an amazing place to be able to call our own and to have tutors and computers and printers and our own workspaces. It really is like, I, I can't say that I missed out on anything because I really didn't. PCC gave me everything that you could possibly need to have act academic success, which I have been able to achieve with PCC. So specifically, yes, for student athletes, and we have our own tutors. There's times and everything. I mean, it is everything is so organized and just it literally is just it's great for academics. Um, change. I don't know. I look at it not to be like, uh, but I feel like change is. I wouldn't change or take nothing back because I feel like what is given to me is what I have to work with. And it builds you in a different way, but I guess. How could we be better? How oh. could we serve you better? The community college system or the school or? I don't know. I'm appreciative about everything, but um, maybe a, a athletic study zone. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have one. We don't have one. Yeah, we don't really have that either. But could Jamie try to start something like that with the um, athletic ram zone? But I think we should learn from them because they seem to know what they're doing. But wait, I, I will say, I will say, academically it was great. But if we had our own fi like field on campus, then that would be. Do you have priority uh, registration? Uh, yeah, we do. We have priority registration now. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, I just want to say, I, I usually don't like standing up and asking questions, but, but I just had to tell the three of you, you're absolutely remarkable. Uh, you, you have me a tear a little bit. You know, that's tough for a big guy. <laughs> but I just, I, I honestly want to compliment you and tell you that you're remarkable. I was texting my wife, telling her some of the things you guys were saying. It just has had a huge impact on me today. Kind of like an aha moment. So I guess. My question would be, inside the classroom, you know, we know it's the coaches or teachers, okay, but aside from your coaches, can you name a specific moment in a classroom, you know, where a teacher at your community college, high school, I don't care, but gave you that aha moment, you know, where you're like, wow, where, it, you know, because we go through a lot of days in our lives, right, and I'm just, I'm curious if you can cite um, I had an amazing physiology teacher, Jeffrey Cole, um, and he um, he's in my – physiology is a part of a class that I had to take for my field of study for my career, and um, he literally made it – he made it realistic, and he made it connect back to each student's life where they could say, oh, I understand, and I actually um, shared with him – um, my, what had was going on with me because uh, while I was taking his class was when I was going through rejection and he I mean I went to office hours and to study and things like that and he was so he was literally so willing to help and do anything he could to make sure that I succeeded in that class and for me I've had teachers tell me, you know, like, oh, well, I hope you can get the assignment in, you know, and it, it's like, especially as student athletes, like, our days are so scheduled, where it's like we have an allotted time for everything, and as a professor, he worked through everybody's individual schedule, and he made it, he took that extra step and that extra effort to make sure that his class succeeded, and you ask anybody who was in my class that semester, that was the best science class that we've ever taken. Like, you can probably ask anybody in that class. It really was. Um, I, had this, I have this one t um, t professor in my soci He's a sociology professor, Dr. Cromity. And um, he made a big impact in my life, like, 
just simply for a hug. Like, he's so funny. Like, but I could be walking, semesters could go by, and you'll see him one time and he'll remember you and just stop. He'll stop walking and turn around and give you a hug. Give me a hug. Like, that's all I need sometimes is a hug after a hard day's work in basketball and school, not knowing what to do next. And he'll just stop and just be like, oh, Jackie. And then instantly just give me a hug. And that's what I appreciate the most out of a, in school. Um, probably in my computer science class, the first one I ever took, I didn't know how to code. I didn't know how to do anything. I asked the teacher like 100 questions. She was getting really annoyed at me. But then, like the last question, I, I had her come over. And then I ended up figuring it out myself. And then she looked at me and she was like, you're a computer scientist. You got this. And so I think that was the deciding moment that I was like, I think I can do this. I see no more hands. Uh, again, uh, our Scholar Athlete Luncheon is, is really one of the highlights, if not the highlight, of our convention with all the other stuff we're doing. It's because this is the fruit of your labor. So I want to thank you, ladies, uh, for being here and for the work that you've done and your accomplishments. And I wish you nothing but the best of luck going forward. Don't forget us. Don't forget us. That ends our luncheon, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy the rest of our session.